Hi guys, it's Miss Tara from the Northwest Library, and I'm here to share some of my favorite kids' books from the month of February. February is Black History Month, so I thought we'd start off with this book. It's called All Star, How Larry Doby Smashed the Color Barrier in Baseball. Now that football season is over, many of us are thinking towards spring training and baseball, and Larry played for Cleveland. So I thought this might be a fun book. So this is a considered a biography. It's a little more text heavy because it's got true facts in it. Not too bad of text though, and it tells how um, in Larry Doby's neighborhood, tall and short, black and white, slow and flat, fast, all played baseball together. And he was a good player, and eventually he made it up to the bigs, and he played for Cleveland. Let me get there, show the picture there. Okay, I will eventually. See him there, getting ready to bat. All right, and it talks a little bit about Jackie Robinson, who was the first black player to play baseball, and how his life continued on, and he became a great baseball player. Um, so if you your child has uh, a report to read or write or um, needs a book for Black History Month, this is a great book. Again, this is All Star by Audrey Varick. This book is a lot of fun. I love the illustrations. It's called Nobody Like a Book, and it's Nobody Like a Friend. And this book is by Alan Wolf. And he talks about how books can be our friends too. We learn important stuff from books. We learn to speak and think. And we learn how to play the harmonica, to bake and cook, to read and write. Nobody like a book. And there's book, there's stuff about hot air balloons and trains and space and stars. And if anybody knows me, this of course is my favorite page because you can learn a lot about birds, which I love. So again, you gotta finish this book. It's called Nobody Like a Book. This book here is called James's Reading Rescue. And James keeps missing his recess because he doesn't like to read aloud. So James struggles with reading and misses recess to practice. To cheer himself up, he visits the cat rescue and befriends a ghost, the cat in the box. <clears throat> but ghost isn't quite ready to make friends. As his reading improves, James learns that kindness, kindness and perseverance can have unexpected rewards and that having furry friends is the best gift of all. Now, a lot of people read to dogs and we've had dogs come and read um, have dogs come to the library so that the kids can read to them because it takes off a little bit of the pressure. So if your child's having difficulty reading or they're not enjoying reading as much, you can always sit them down with a pet, just like James does, and practice on their reading aloud. This is a very cute book. I really like this one. This book is kind of funny. This is called Minna by Matthew Forsyth, uh, and the illustrations are amazing. So this is a story about trust and surprises and a mouse and her father who live in a piece of wood. Okay, so I love when these covers, the front part here has drawings in them. So, um, Minna lived in her own little world where nothing bothered her except for one thing. It wasn't her father who was always bringing home surprises from the outside world. And he did. He brought a can here. And he brought stamps. And he would bring friends over. And then one day, he brings home a squirrel. Is this a squirrel? Does this animal and this animal work well together? But they think it's a squirrel. And the squirrel won't eat, and it won't drink, and it won't play. So her dad goes out and gets Two more squirrels so they have are outnumbered by the squirrels and they still won't eat and they can't figure out why they won't eat and it kind of gets a little crazy after that look at this 
They bring a doctor in to check the squirrels out. Yeah, yeah. And you can see what happens. But you'll have to finish this book. Check it out for yourself to see how this ends and check out these amazing illustrations. Again, that is meh. This book is beautiful. This is called Night Walk. It's by Maria Dorlins. Okay. So the kids are fast asleep and mom and dad wake them up when they say we're going for a walk. It's still nighttime. They get their packs. They walk out the door. They walk by a bunch of buildings and all the lights are off. They walk by a tra passing train and you can think of what that sounds of the crunching on the grass when everything is silent. They see deer. They lay in the grass and check out all the stars and they keep hiking and they sit on a rock so they can watch the sun rise. I just think this is a beautiful book and I'm thinking about what the sounds are like and maybe it's something you and your kids might want to do. Oh, my next book is about sibling rivalry a little bit. So Ready for the Spotlight by Jamie Kim. So. Tessie is ready for the spotlight. This is Tessie. But her big sister, Maya, always seems to shine a little brighter. Can Tessie find her own way to sparkle? So, of course, Maya has been practicing a lot longer and dancing a lot longer. So she's better than Tessie. But Tessie doesn't get that. And Tessie gets very mad about it. And Tessie kind of marches to the beat of her own drum in this book and I think it's kind of funny she doesn't dance quite like everybody else she does her own thing but then her sister needs her help because she's not as creative she thinks as her so they do come together and they do go to their own show together and it's a nice book and then I have two nonfiction books for you. This one is called What's in Your Pocket, and it's about collecting things in nature and how some famous and well-known scientists also did that. Because a lot of times we go for a walk at, say, Alley Park, and we find just the right rock. It's so cool, we want it for our collection, and we put it in our pocket. And that's how some of these scientists did, too. So it's called What's in Your Pocket, Collecting Nature's Treasures by Heather L. Montgomery. So it says, when you explore the great outdoors and find something strange and wonderful, do you put it in your pocket? Scientists collect specimens so they can observe the details of natural artifacts. You see a little boy here, this is George. George found a strange seed pod and he put it in his pocket and he forgot all about it until Seeds exploded all over the room, and after that, George had to empty out his pockets on the porch. Nobody knew that George would grow up, grow up to be a famous scientist, George Washington Carver. And then it tells a little bit about what the scientist did. So, there's lots of different scientists in here, and what they collected when they were kids, and who they became when they were older. So, really cool book. I really like this one. And then my last book is a little bit oversized. It's called Shapes and Patterns in Nature. Okay, So finding different shapes and patterns in nature. So we have leaves, tree bark, flowers, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, shells, insect wings and shards, fins and scales, skin, bird wings and feathers, my favorite fur and hair and minerals and crystals. Okay, so check out this one and this is just about leaves. And there's a little bit of text. Leaves catch rays of sunshine in their green palms so they can grow and live happily. Whether they're broad, narrow, pointed, or heart-shaped, all fulfill their purpose. When the dry season comes, they would rather fall than see their beloved plants go thirsty. And then there's all these different plants and they're all labeled. So you could look at something like this and then go out into your garden in the spring and see what you can find. 
Look at the amazing illustrations for the flowers. Not a ton of text. Look at that. Oh, I just think it's beautiful. Such a beautiful book. There's one about fish. I know some families who really like fish. And their different tails and fins. And of course, my favorite, the birds. All right, so check this book out. This is called Shapes and Patterns. Now we have most of these books here at the Northwest Library, um, but if you can't find them at your local library, you can give us a call or go online and reserve them for yourself. And I'll see you again in March with some of my favorite children's books. Thanks for watching, bye.